Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Zulfa. Just like we want to discuss something new today. Um, in the previous lectures, we discussed the characteristics of the Palestinian literature in general and, and our modern Palestinian literature after the, the First World War up to now. And um, we, we took an example, uh, the Palestinian novel before 48, Nakba and after 48 Nakba. And we took an example, we gave an example, or we gave examples of the Palestinian novelists, particularly the most famous one, who is Ghassan Kanafani. Okay, and today we will discuss the most famous novel of Kanafani's. Now, it is the, the novel, the most famous novel of Hassan Kenefani is Men in the Sun. We want to read Men in the Sun critically. What do you mean by critical reading? Men in the Sun, critical reading. What do you mean by critical reading? Let's see the other slides, how to explain critical reading. What is critical reading? Critical reading is a thorough, careful reading that includes analyzing, interpreting, and sometimes evaluating. Okay, when you read just, you don't read for just enjoyment or just to, to know events, no. You analyze everything. You want to know why this situation happened and what the author means what the author means when he describes the situation. For example, of course, you, you read the, the novel. I asked you to read the novel or what sometimes they call it a novella. When Ghassan Kanafani in the beginning describes a, bear, a black bear drumming and flying around and, and, and around. So what does he mean by that? When he, spoke, when he spoke about the, the white sky, what does he mean? When he spoke about Abu Qais who was lying on the, on the land and he was putting his, his ear on, on the land trying to, to hear and he says that he was hearing or he was listening to the beating of the, of the ears. So what, what does he want to say? Okay, so you have to analyze the situation and to interpret try to, to, to take a decision about the, the, the situation. And sometimes you evaluate, you evaluate, this is good, this is bad, this is wrong, this is um, right, this is successful, this is failure, and so on. You, you, you evaluate what type of situation is that. Uh, when you read it critically, we use, or when we read critically, we use our critical thinking skills, such as the following. What are the critical thinking skills? We have to know these things and to practice them while reading our novella or reading any other thing, and any other book. In any other reading, you have to read critically. Analyzing, which, which means, or analysis, which means breaking something into its component. In a situation, a situation is a group of events together related to each other, a group of ideas together related to each other. You have to break them, to break the one unit of something to, to be smaller, to understand it. For example, when he uh, describes Asad who was roaming in the desert, you have to, to analyze the situation. Uh, as a man alone in the desert, the, the, the elements of the situation, the, the burning sun, the burning sun in the desert, the sand hills of sand in the desert, no people in the desert, no water in the desert, all these things are elements of the situation. What did the sun cause for him? What did lack of water cause for him? What did hills cause for him? So you analyze the situation. And at, at the end, you, you can interpret it and you decide or you conclude that he was in a very, very awful situation that 
he was going to die. When you interpret the situation, you say it was really an awful situation. He was going to die. Inference, reading between lines to elicit hidden meaning. It's not only to read uh, the lines in front of you. You have to ask yourself what, you have, the following question, what does the writer want to say? What does the writer want to say? Is it only to describe the desert? Everybody knows what is the desert and it's hot and it, uh, there's no water, but, but why? Why, uh, why he's saying like that, okay? Evaluation, the ability to make decision based on the available information. As I explained before, you have to evaluate. For example, when you read a story, uh, you want to elicit the, uh, the morals in that story. And there are many characters. You say that this character is uh, kind and the other ca character is uh, aggressive. Uh, so you evaluate the situations and the characters in a novel or in a situation. Explanation also, this is an, another skill of critical reading. Explanation means to give reasons for your findings clearly. When you say that uh, Hassan Kanafani uh, describes the harsh situation of Palestinian refugees, or when you say that Kanafani wanted to say these people or the characters have lost their way to, to their country. So you have to, to give reasons, okay? To explain, it means to give reasons and so on. To be open-minded or open-mindedness, um, you have to take in account uh, that there are other opinions and other possibilities other than yours. And you have to respect others or discuss, the, discuss what they have. So these are the critical thinking skills. You have to use these skills while reading this novel or any other novel. Let's come to our novella or our novel, which is The Men and the Sun. How many chapters does the novella Men and the Sun contain? And what does each chapter discuss? And the next one, the next slide, what are the main characters portrayed in the novella? These are three questions that you have to ask them and to find them. One of the main characteristics, now we want to say the characteristics of, of Ghassan's writings. One of the main characteristics of Kanafani's literary work work is symbolism. What do you mean by symbolism? Symbolism in literature. What do you mean by symbolism in literature? Now, here, symbolism is the practice or art of using an object or a word to represent an abstract idea. Abstract idea, it means unknown, unseen, okay, untouched, okay, but use something concrete that you can see and touch to, to represent an abstract idea. So, for example, when you carry, when we see that a dove, a pigeon, the bird, a pigeon, carrying uh, the olive branch, what does that mean? Can you answer? It refers to peace. So this, this figure, a pigeon or a dove carrying a branch of olives is a symbol of peace. Okay. When you say, for example, at uh, the pharmacy, you say a cup and around the cup, there is a, a snake. Okay. You, you, as if you are saying medicine is it's useful, but it is also, it might be poisonous. You have to take care. 
and so on. Um, so you see, you you use symbolism and means that you use concrete things to represent abstract ideas or thoughts. Okay. Now, I'll give examples of symbolism. Colors are symbols of thoughts or ideas or situations. For example, symbolism is often found in colors. And it, it, it also depends on the culture. Which color to use depends on the culture. When you say so, black is uh, refers to evil, maybe in some cultures it does not refer to evil. Okay, maybe when we say uh, white is a symbol of purity, uh, in some cultures maybe, uh, it refers to sadness. However, now let's see uh, general examples. Black is used to represent death or evil. So black color is a symbol of evil and death. White stands for or represents or a symbol of life and the purity pure, okay? Red can symbolize blood, passion, danger, or immoral character. Purple is a, ro a royal color, purple, the nostalgia. Yellow stands for violence or decay, okay? Now, uh, yellow stand it says, um, it stands for violence and decay. Uh, decay it means something which is going uh, which is going into pieces um comes into small pieces okay uh, for example uh, old buildings are decaying they are coming they are falling and coming into pieces but also it depends on the character uh, on the culture for example in quran we say safra ufaqi'un launuha tasurru nadirin and as if uh, that this white color, this yellow color, it, it, it is taken as um, a symbol of beauty. This is, I, I say it depends on choosing the color or selecting the color depends on the culture. Blue represent peacefulness and calmness. Now, sometimes objects or we, we, we use objects to refer to ideas also. For example, a chain can symbolize the coming together of two things. A chain, it has rings uh, connected to each other. It refers to unity, okay, not separation. A ladder can represent the relationship between the heaven and the earth. A mirror can donate the sun, but when it is broken, it can represent an unhappy union or separation, broken mirror. So these are objects which, which represent ideas. Okay, weather also, weather as symbols now, also in works of literature, a writer might spend a moment describing the weather in a particular scene. Now, when, when an author or a novelist uh, or a poet describes the weather, uh, he does not want us only to know that, that the weather was rainy, the weather was sunny, the weather was warm. No, he wants to communicate a message because Describing the weather in literature means something. When it was, it was a, a sunny a spring day, the sun was shining and birds were singing and it was warm, it was not cold, it was not so hot. He wants to give us feeling of happiness. When, when he describes the weather, as, as, uh, uh, for example, it was stormy, uh, uh, some ships were sailing on the sea and they were uh, moving there and here. And so, so because of the bad weather, he wants to give us feelings of something terrible that would happen. 
Uh, this is likely for a reason. Uh, let's talk, uh, take a look at few examples. Fog, for example. Fog might represent bad omen or something terrible in the horizon. But something, fog means something terrible because if you, you know fog, you, you, you may not see anything in the fog. You may have an accident in the fog. Okay, so storm usually symbolize hostility or turmoil, turmoil sorry. Uh, hostility, enmity, something, someone who's enemy to you. Okay, snow often comes with a message of calmness or purity. Also, it depends on the culture. Now, wind might be used to symbolize power or strength. So also weather in literary, in literary works uh, are uh, symbols, weather conditions are symbols of something. Now, we want to come to symbols in men and the sun. The novel can be read, I mean the novel, the men and the sun can be read in different ways. Everyone can read it in a different ways, okay? Or many symbols, uh, or many ideas can be understood of this novella. Um, one, he understand it as, as an attack to Arab regime. One uh, will understand it uh, as showing a weakness of those refugees who prefer to uh, travel in the desert to gain money or to gain bread, to resisting the Zionists and regaining their country, and so on. Uh, here, um, maybe it's also um, somebody, someone uh, reads it as a, a, a picture or a photo or an image that represents the Palestinian refugees suffering. Okay, now, so the novella can be read in different ways of symbolism. One, on one level, it can be read as an expose, an expose of the main character's weakness in preferring and preferring the search for material security, for money in other countries over the fight to regain their land. Okay? Maybe. Someone reads it in a different way, reads it as an attack uh, against the corruption of the Arab regimes, Arab countries, Arab governments who abandoned their responsibility towards blood ties towards Palestinians. They allowed them to be suffocated, to be suffocated in an airless tank. Even the airless tank maybe is uh, maybe it is a symbol of uh, the camps where Palestinian people live. Uh, also, it refers to how Arab regimes marginalized Palestinian people and let them live in camps as prisoners. This is what we mean. This is how we can read this novel and to get the symbols of every every word, every word. Yeah, the symbolism is attached to every word in the novel. And this is what we want to find while reading the novel. You have to read the novel in this way, to analyze the novel, the symbols and, uh, in the novel. Okay, now also we want to add something, the types of conflict. Uh, the novel is full of types of conflict. It is 
conflict, man to man, like refugees, the three refugees and the smugglers. It is conflict, man to nature, people who were, Asad who was lost in the desert and they were uh, obliged uh, to get into the hot tank and so, so it's okay. And um, also, uh, man to, to himself, you find that Abul Qais was in, in, in conflict whether to, to go to Kuwait or not to go to Kuwait and to live uh, still in the camp or to, and so on. So uh, also conflict to supernatural, supernatural like witches, for example, which is not available here. Uh, maybe conflict against technology. Actually, we are in conflict against technology. Now, conflict with technology and uh, character against society. So we some sometimes you feel that uh, some traditions are uh, are rotten and you want to change them. So these are types of conflicts which I want you to find, which I want you to find while reading the novel. Okay, and also I want you to find the themes. So you have to find symbols in, in the novel while reading, you have to find types of conflict and you have to, to find the themes of the novel. Thank you very much. Again, I'll repeat the, the last two slides because we were uh, uh, in short of, of uh, internet. Uh, again, I repeat the types or here where we types of conflict, not the one before. Um, whether symbolism, we got it now here. In many in the sun, we said that there are many types of symbols as those people, who, those three refugees who um, preferred to travel across the desert and to get peace, life, and, and to get money in Kuwait uh, instead of resisting the Zionists for, to regain their country. He's, he wanted to show, to show their mistake and the wrong, wrong deed um, or an, another symbol, it's an attack to the corruption of the Arab regimes, which abandoned the responsibility towards Palestinian people and put them into camps uh, or they marginalized them in refugee camps. Um, uh, there are other symbols that I want you to, to find them when you read, everybody reads this novel in a different way. Now, we come, we want to, to turn to types of conflict. First of all, you have to know what to mean by conflict or what are the types of conflicts. Now, conflict may be between man and himself. Okay, now, it mean it can be between two characters like the smugglers and the refugees. It can be between man and nature, like the desert and Assad in the, in the novel. Uh, against character and supernatural, like when there is a witch or a giant or what imagine giant or what. Um, against technology, character and technology, you see that now we are in, 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 in conflict with technology particularly for 
our uh, youth and children who are who are eager to to waste their time dealing with internet and other things this is one exact this is an example not all character uh, the vs society or against society sometimes you find our people some people find themselves in conflict with the society if they want to change something which is traditional and some maybe some habits were or some uh, routines written routines uh, to, to change something like that you find yourself in, con in conflict with the society here are the main points i wanted to include in this lecture and um, I want you to prepare while reading. I want you to find the, the symbols and the symbolism in, in the novel. And why I want you to find uh, the types of conflict. And I want you uh, also to find the themes of the novel. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll meet later, inshallah. <laughs>